Tag TV and Tag Radio be seen and heard by both technology users and technology producers throughout the state of Georgia and around the world. Low cost, big benefits, powerhouse online branded video and audio has arrived. Tag TV, Tag Radio, there's a lot more to know. Join me on an exploration of the virtual world. Building Information Modeling, BIM. It's a process involving the generation and management of digital representations of physical and functional characteristics of a facility. The resulting building information models become shared knowledge resources to support decision making about a facility from its earliest conceptual stages through design and construction through its operational life and eventual demolition. Suddenly, everything changes. Virtual Information Modeling, VIM. All virtual creations presuppose a basic imitation of reality. Virtual worlds are considered not to be real in the concrete sense. A virtual world, for example, does concretely exist as a series of electronic impulses on at least one piece of hardware. So when we're referring to something as virtual, it may be more helpful to think of the idea in terms of tangibility. We conceptualize that which we cannot physically alter or experience as virtual. A virtuality, then, can be conceptualized alternatively as a physical equivalent or a model which resists tangibility. In other words, which resists touch. Greetings, everyone. It's Friday, July 26, 2013, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mantella. I'm your guest host, Frank Baia. Up to the Tech Talk, the term virtual, it's come to mean modeling through the use of a computer, where the computer models a physical equivalent. A virtual world models the real world with 3D structures and virtual reality seeks to model reality, enhancing a virtual world with mechanisms for eye and hand movements. BIM, Building Information Modeling, slowly morphs into VIM, Virtual Information Modeling, and suddenly everything changes. The Tech Talk focus is on a disruptive software that is virtually changing the world. That's right. We meet Rodney Mims Cook, Jr., co-founder of FemTrek. FemTrek is a multi-component revolutionary rendering and collaboration tool that converts files into fully immersive, freely navigable 3D environments. The company was established in 2011 and is a 3D interactive technology company specializing in developing gaming and simulation algorithms. The team was developed the FemTrek software initially as FemTrek producer and then later as FemTrek viewer. The software platform is a plug-and-play that offers a new way for the industry to experience a collaborative and fully interactive design, bid, and build process. FemTrek, it's a real-time interactive experience and complete immersion in the building and interiors environment, enabling architects, designers, and contractors to work faster, smarter, and greener. Rodney is a highly creative and visionary individual. He is truly best described as a renaissance man. A graduate of Washington and Lee University, by the age of 14, he initiated the campaign would successfully save the 5,000-plus seat Fox Theater, for which he received the National Trust Preservation Prize. By 74, he was a White House intern. By 82, he established a soon-to-be-recognized leading monument, museum, and public parks architecture firm. He is the founding trustee of the Prince of Wales Foundation for Architecture and organized the design and construction of the Prince's Olympic Games Monument here in Atlanta. He is a charter signer of the Congress for New Urbanism. He is currently orchestrating the design for a memorial in Washington, D.C. to Presidents John and John Quincy Adams. Rodney is the founder and the president of the National Monuments Foundation, which, is, which choreographed the design and construction of the Millennium Gate Museum right here in Atlanta. He's on the board of directors of the Hertz Foundation, Hertz Castle, California, the Fox Theater Incorporated, the Institute of Classical Architecture and Art in New York, the Savannah College of Art and Design, and is a past president of the Animal Health Trust U.S. New Market, England. We are going to gain the insights into the genesis of the Vintech technology and find out why it's such a breakthrough technology. Also, we'll learn about one of Atlanta's best-kept secrets, the Millennium Gate, as we tech talk with co-founder of FinTrek, Rodney Mims Cook. This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you by Globalspeak.com 
new media consultants, corporate video and audio communications, video and audio production and distribution, live and virtual event production. Tag TV and Tag Radio is a service of Globalspeak.com, creatively delivering powerful marketing, video, and audio solutions. Rodney, welcome to Tech Talk. Thanks very much. Glad to be with you. Uh, really excited to get into the conversation about Vimtrek. I, I think a lot of people may be familiar. It seems like maybe um, seven to eight years ago they were talking about geospatial indexing and they were talking about creating virtual environments that would allow you to uh, uh, look at a uh, geographic location, say, from uh, fire sa safety or, uh, or police protection and security. And I know that over that period of time also gaming came about and we had uh, – second world uh, type engines that uh, ran virtual worlds and that kind of thing. But uh, uh, business information modeling, that's kind of at the root of what you guys are into, right? I mean, that's something that's been around in architecture for a little bit of time. Tell us a little bit about the genesis of, of Vimtrek. I was uh, in a meeting at the Millennium Gate, which is uh, our Georgia History Museum in downtown Atlanta, with Errol Wolford, who is one of our directors. And we have a lot of technology here in our museum that is interactive with young folks. Uh, there's uh, It's compulsory eighth grade Georgia history. Um, we were coming up with a new idea uh, as a third generation for this interactive technology to educate folks. And I was showing it to Errol uh, to see what he thought. And he said, you know, this could have huge ramifications, much more than uh, history. Uh, initially, our third co-founder is Tracy Spate. We were thinking in terms of how can we make CAD drawing, uh, computer-assisted design in the architectural profession, um, overlap with gaming technology, which he does. And uh, CAD drawing is really, it, it turned my profession of architecture kind of ugly. Uh, drawings before that were really beautiful. Uh, and CAD drawing is, is pretty mechanical looking. Uh, when you combine it with a gaming engine, uh, where everything is very beautiful and uh, very fast, you really have something new. And uh, Errol and, and his smart BIM company had an engine for it. And so uh, immediately he said, this will work uh, for a lot more than uh, education and history. So that's how we got started. Well, you, you, you kind of uh, segued into something that some of our listeners may not be uh, aware of. Obviously, Vimtrek is a, a winner of uh, the Southeastern Software Association's Impact Award, um, and it has to do with, a, I'm going to call it a, a virtualization engine that allows for uh, um, uh, the virtualization of anything, actually, but I'm going to say architectural projects. I know in your particular case, um, mon monuments and actual gardens and those kind of things that are done on a large scale. When I talk about gardens, I'm talking about historic uh, um, uh, situations that are pretty elaborate and pretty extensive. So um, maybe let's touch a little bit on the Millennium Gate and a little bit about what you do besides Vintrek, because I think you did, and, and I don't know if you can cover that in a short order, because I know how how many interests you have and how successful you are at them. But tell us a little bit about. Uh, the foundation, the actual Monument Foundation, and some of the stuff that you're into? Uh, the Millennium Gate is uh, in a triumphal arch in Atlantic Station in, in Midtown Atlanta. And uh, I do a lot of uh, museums, public spaces, parks, monuments. Uh, we're currently working on the memorial in Washington to John and John Quincy Adams and their wives. Uh, we've been involved in the Eisenhower Memorial discussion in Washington also, uh, and our technology has also been involved with the Washington uh, Eisenhower Memorial situation. Um, the Millennium Gate is the most comprehensive museum of Georgia history in the state. Uh, we were assisted by the Georgia Historical Society in Savannah, uh, Atlanta History Center here, uh, Atlanta University Archives, the Bremen Jewish History Museum, uh, numbers of other Atlanta institutions that tell our story, but mostly from their particular focus. Uh, we are a broad brush picture of Georgia history, which is uh, being one of the original 13 colonies, one of the most extraordinary histories uh, of all the 13 colonies. Um, 
Now, I got to interrupt you because it, yeah. this is a, a must see. Uh, uh, a, 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 it's hard to describe, but I mean, it's a it's a building, it's a monument, it's a museum. Um, I've had the the real opportunity to have a, an opportunity to see it for myself, and it is probably one of the most best kept secrets in Atlanta. Not only is the building and, and the overall park absolutely magnificent, the inside is educational and intriguing. But then the, the extra layer on top is the technology and some of the ways that you've applied that technology is just absolutely brilliant. And the the amazing part about it is it sits right next to Atlantic Station or not too far. You might better describe exactly where it's located in terms of Atlantic Station because I'm not necessarily familiar with the streets. But I think probably people drive by it almost every day or occasionally drive by it and don't realize the uh, in, incredible um, facility that lies inside that building. You're absolutely correct. Actually, we've had two governors uh, come through, and they said the exact same thing, the best-kept secret in Georgia, and, and they have uh, committed themselves to helping turn that around and change it. Uh, we are in the geographic heart of Atlantic Station at the corner of 17th and State, where the difference between the residential component, which – uh, we bridge and the high rise uh, development uh, occurs. Mm -hmm. So we've got the Atlantic and the 12th Hotel across the street from us, which are one's 50 stories, one's 30, and then we have the mid rise uh, residential on on the other side of us. And so uh, it's uh, and, and it's also the largest new urbanism development in in America uh, currently still because of the 2008 uh, financial uh, adjustment. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we thought, uh, because I'm a charter signer of the Congress for New Ur Urbanism Charter, that this would be the most appropriate and poignant place to put such a, a monument, uh, particularly since we excavated all of the underground beneath the arch uh, to have 12,000 feet of exhibition space on, on Georgia history. Uh, Atlanta has for 150 years called herself the gateway to the south, but we didn't have a true gateway like many uh, European and American cities. So now literally, we do. Literally. A, lit a literal gate, and now we, now we do. You know, one of the things that I was impressed with was uh, it left me thinking how much history is about change. And, and uh, when you think in terms of change, you, you normally think of the future. And so... Uh, uh, I left there thinking when you realize how much one of the one of the things that really emphasizes the change aspect i don 't know exactly the proper terminology, but there 's literally a uh, a wall that is uh, like an LED wall, I guess, or some form of uh, monitor that allows you to look at a location in Atlanta as you see it today. You sweep your arm like a a uh, black box Wii game kind of a controller, and all of a sudden it goes back a hundred years and takes you to what was there a hundred years or or the equivalent of a hundred years ago in in that same location and I thought, what an amazing um, perspective because I think of the Millennium Gate as not so much talking about a gate to Atlanta or a gate to Georgia or even a gate to its history it 's really a gate to its future because we we 've embraced change all through of our entire heritage. And, of course, we're going through now a new technology era that's going to take us into all kinds of new changes that a lot of us are going to embrace, but a lot of us are going to have to uh, kind of have to deal with because they're going to, quote, unquote, disrupt our our traditional ecosystems, as you might uh, call it. What's interesting, I think, from my perspective, too, Rodney, is that um, I, I, you're, you're, you're such a, a challenge to describe in the sense that you focus so strongly on tradition and you are such a, an evangelist to in terms of uh, um, of architecture being uh, more of a traditional architecture, and yet you're also a new visionary, a new thinker that takes uh, and pushes the envelope uh, from the Millennium Gate all the way the, to uh, Fimtrek. So it's a, a, a pretty amazing story. Uh, we're going to run out of time pretty quickly here. I, uh, let's go back, to, if you will. I, I do want to reemphasize again: it's the Millennium Gate, and, and again, where is it located, Ronnie? What are the street intersections? Uh, the Millennium Gate is located at the uh, intersection of 17th Street, which is the main avenue that goes through the center of Atlantic Station, and State Street. We are in the middle of the avenue. We're a triumphal arch based on the Arch of Titus, and you can't miss us. We're 10 stories tall. Uh, I say to any of our members, any of our listeners, 
you've got to see it to believe it. It's probably something that you're going to say, I've gone by here and didn't even realize I'd, that it was there. And it's, and it's ironic because it's magnificent. It's just, uh, I guess maybe it's a case if you do your job well enough and place something almost exactly where it's supposed to be, it doesn't necessarily stick out in terms of being so blatant that it's intrusive because it just seems like it's been there for a hundred years, a thousand years. I mean, I don't know. But anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the award and the breakthrough part of the technology with Vintrek. You mentioned that uh, um, some of the people were, that were in the early uh, evolution of the concept kind of backed away and said, whoa, wait a minute, this has got more legs on it than you might think. Um, how do you guys are positioning it now? Where do you see it as a breakthrough technology? Um, actually sort of go offline, backed away from it. Tell me what you meant by that. Uh, we're, we're now back on the subject of uh, Well, I know we're back, but nobody backed off. Errol, if anything. No, 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 no. I don't mean back, back off. I mean, I mean backed away and went, whoa, you know, this is oh, something oh, more. Oh, I see what you mean. There's yeah. something uh, more to it. Yeah, no, Errol, who is one of the directors of the National Mount Monuments Foundation, which is the parent of the Millennium Gate, uh, yeah, his, he was so enthusiastic, he just about jumped out of his chair. And um, we have found that it has some sort of uh, use for pretty much everybody. There is very little in any sort of uh, part of contemporary lifestyle that we have found that they can't use it for something. And it's staggered us because initially it was designed for museums. You know, we're in the museum business too, and typically 90 to 98% of museum collections are stored and people rarely get to see them mm -hmm, ever. Mm -hmm. And so the idea being that we could virtualize museum interiors and bring all of the, uh, ultimately if we get all these museums, we could have the entire cultural patrimony of the planet available to everyone that has a computer for the first time in history. And you can get so close to the works of art, be they sculpture or paintings, that you can see sculpture carving marks as well as the brush strokes of, you know, Manet or Leonardo. Um, you can get closer to them than you can when you're really there. And in the case of Leonardo's Mona Lisa, it's behind glass and behind ropes mm -hmm. and guards. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get so close to it, you can't believe it. So um, that was an initial idea that Tracy and I were trying to come up with to uh, be able to allow more people to have connection to their cultural patrimony. Well, it's, it's um, pretty, we, we're blessed in the fact of what we do with Tech Talk. We talk to a lot of verticals. We get to talk to a lot of thought leaders and visionaries, a lot of uh, technology uh, uh, programmers and developers of one kind or another. Again, this is a rare for me to have the opportunity to have really seen this uh, and see it demonstrated. And uh, again, to the listeners, you almost have, you can't put it into words. I mean, it, what you're looking at is, is it's virtual, but it's not. It, you see it as it is. And in fact, isn't it even a case where you can change the seasons and change the perspective? I, I know one of the things that you're uh, uh, working on is a, a potential park um, that uh, needed uh, community support. And instead of having to devise uh, uh, enthusiasm by way of even renderings and detail renderings, you were kind of literally able to take them through a walk through the park. Uh, yes, we did, and as a result, we have 100% neighborhood agreement with what we want to do, which is typically not in a, a, a neighborhood that uh, agrees to things like that very quickly. And so that was a huge help to us that we really meant what we uh, were telling them. Uh, as well, we we have. Uh, significant hospital in Istanbul that we're working on. It looks like we're going to save them uh, in the range of a billion euro on their construction. Another project in Sagrera, uh, Spain, likewise, uh, our technology was able to pick up mistakes that were made in the thousands of pages of drawings that mistakes, you know, get made and then they just get repeated. Mm. Uh, and no one then notices them. Uh, well, our system picked up in both of those circumstances errors and were able to correct them. We picked them up in two minutes. Um, we can also map carbon footprint, uh, various complexes, single buildings, or entire regions of the city. We can pick up carbon footprint. Uh, and so you can also deal with that sort of green issue today and correct your building because Errol, my partner's company, also is very involved with RS Means. And so they know with just the tweak of some tiny bit of information that uh, could have huge ramifications in the millions and in some cases a billion 
dollars uh, to to fix uh, a, a green issue that's you know not not green. Uh, President Clinton in the Clinton Global Initiative, is my understanding, is now quoting my partner Errol uh, in part because uh, of the carbon footprint issue as well. Currently, estimators are paid around 10% of all construction, uh, whereas the architects and engineers are paid 7% combined. Uh, 4.5% for architects and 2.5% for construction engineers. That's just wrong. And uh, our system can fix that overnight and have that imbalance for the folks who are actually constructing and designing these things have more of the lion's share of, of what is generated in, in those sorts of uh, costs. Well, you, you know, uh, there's a, a number of areas, especially as of late, where the technology community is recognizing where Georgia leads. We lead in logistics. We, do, we lead in health IT. We lead in fintech. Um, I think, Rodney, you and the people at uh, uh, Vimtrek are, are setting the standard in which we'll be leading in uh, virtual reality and, and virtual environments because uh, this new technology and new product, it's uh, somewhat of an exaggeration, but its level of impact is disruptive. And I know that uh, a lot of times, especially when we deal with uh, – um, startup incubator type visionaries they want to quote unquote change the world and I think you're about doing it I think you've got uh, two aspects the physical aspect of what you do that creates these incredibly magnificent spaces all over the world and now you've got a case where um, there's a platform to do almost identical uh, at least in the mind of the beholder in a virtual reality so again uh, compliments on the award uh, compliments on the impact award winning with the Southeast Software Association but equally as important Congratulations on all of the things you're doing. And, and one last point before uh, we close today's presentation is, uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, listeners, you, you've rarely heard me say this, but I'm telling you, you've got to search out the Millennium Gate and you've got to see it for yourself.